Uh, see, this is the kind of stuff. Why does everybody have to x-ray their hand? Why is that the go-to? Can't you just be content with a fake hand or the fake finger? Why do you have to do your own hand? Welcome back to the channel, buddy. For those of you who are new around here, my name is Michael, AKA Dr. Cellini, and I am an interventional radiologist. First and foremost, sorry for the background noise. Andrana is currently blow drying her hair because we are going to a wedding in like the next hour and a half. But I got tagged so many times in this guy's video, William Osmond, I think. So everybody said I should react to this video. I have no idea what it is. I have no idea who William Osmond is, but the guy gets mad views. So let's go ahead and react to his video and uh, see what the heck he's talking about. Let's go. All right, so in the interest of time, I'm gonna go ahead and start this video and uh, see what old William is talking about. If I can figure out how to increase the volume. Good. Also, the background has changed yet again. That's because my studio is not set up yet. It will be set up shortly, hopefully. We'll see. Maybe before the next video, who knows? All right, let's get into the video. Hi, I'm William, and I'm $69,210.32 in medical debt. $69,000 medical debt, that's not something to laugh about. I guess, I don't know if he didn't have insurance or not, probably some sort of medical procedure or surgery, or he was admitted to the hospital for a day or two. I have an engineering degree, electrical and mechanical, and I would love to build my own medical equipment to prove that $69,000 is insane. I could build my own medical equipment for way cheaper than that, but I don't have time. I don't think you can build like an MRI machine with under $69,000. I mean, I don't know for certain, but I'm pretty certain. What are you doing? I'm digging a hole. Why? It's a grave. So that next time I get sick, instead of going to the hospital, I'll just die. No, we have medical insurance. You don't need a grave. Your responsibility is 2,491. Wait, so I don't owe $69,000? No, we have medical insurance. See, that's what I was talking about. Usually you get these insanely high bills, and if you have insurance, you only have to cover a very small portion of it, depending on what your insurance specifics are. I guess maybe he had like a $2,500 deductible or whatever amount that he had to meet before insurance covers the rest. That's what I was confused at. I'm like, you don't have to pay $69,000 unless you don't have insurance, so yeah. Oh, one thing I wanted to say. Yes, it's crazy that in America, we have to have our own insurance. We have to pay for insurance and it's not provided to us like other countries are, but that's opening up another can of worms that we're not gonna get into in this video. You can comment below if you wanna talk about it, but yeah. Woo! I'm only $2,500 in debt instead of 69,000. That means we have plenty of time and budget to make an x-ray machine in the garage. That's why you guys are tagging me in this video because he's gonna make an x-ray machine. I was wondering what the catch is here. I only have one question. Why did the hospital bill so much more money than they were ever paid? The hospital tried to bill me $69,000, but only got paid $11,000. Insurance steps in and says, these nuts, we're not paying $69,000. So that makes insurance the good guys, right? Wrong, Billy boy. So hospitals are notorious for charging insurance companies insane amounts of money. So say if a procedure costs like $3,000, they'll charge them like $40,000 for the procedure because they know that they're only going to get a specific amount from the insurance company or a percentage of what they charge so they overbill the insurance companies so that the percent they actually pay meets the price of the actual procedure. It's a weird, crazy, inflated system. It's it's messed up, but that's what they do. While we're at it, he said he was $2,500 in debt. He'll probably make $2,500 on this video alone, so I doubt he's in debt from uh, that. This guy gets mad views, like I said. Turning it on. Part of me wants to think he's like crazy, what the heck is he doing? But he did say he's an engineer, so he probably at least knows what he's doing for the most part. And for $155, I got this x-ray vacuum tube that I pulled out of an old dental x-ray head bot on eBay. What is it with all these, this is the second video now where people just acquire like old x-ray tubes from dental or old hospitals or something. I don't even know you could buy those, but I guess you can. Now I know some of you are probably thinking, William, you're not nearly responsible or smart enough to be playing with high voltage. Well, I say to you, pound sand, I have health insurance and my will to do science <laughs> is significantly stronger than my will to live. I like his style. He's, I like his style. I like where his head's at. High voltage out of the danger box and into the x-ray tube. Should be easy, right? I've got this red wire wired up positive. So he essentially has this super high voltage box that he's going to hook up to this x-ray machine that he has from some 
retired dental x-ray tube or something. That's how you power the x-ray machine, but who knew you could just buy this stuff off eBay? I guess you can, but like knowing what to do with it is another thing. And hopefully he's going to be safe with it. Not like the last video I watched where those guys were a little unsafe with creating their own x-ray device, which is probably why so many people attacked me in this video. You can watch that old video up here. And I'll just turn the power supply on and see what happens. All right, so <laughs> he's just turning on the power supply to this x-ray. There's no shielding, there's nothing. It's just the x-ray tube sitting in a room. So the x-rays are just going to scatter about everywhere. Not good for radiation safety. Ready, turning it on. Turning it on. Hmm, <laughs> interesting. I know he knows what he's doing, but that's that arcing there. I don't know, man. I don't know. It's a little scary for me. Okay, I, I have an idea. If you look right here, this resistor that was a part of the high voltage supply, and it's kind of leaning a little bit over the tube. So let's, let's move, I hate touching this. Let's just move that this way. All right, and now we're turning it on. Oh yeah. Oh yeah, you can hear it hissing. I really want to get the microphone over there, but I'm scared of frying it. Uh, see, this is the kind of stuff so if this x-ray is actually on right now producing x-rays, the x-rays are just scattering about the room right now and radiation is just constantly flowing. I don't know what kind of radiation. It's a smaller tube from a dental x-ray, so it's probably not as large as like the last one we did, but it's still x-rays nonetheless, so I wish we had some sort of meter to measure this. Now we need to work on the next step, which is turning the tube on. Okay, he didn't turn the tube on yet. He's just making sure it's fed properly with uh, enough voltage. Up until this point, we haven't actually been making any x-rays. That's what this... Gotcha. So he does know what he's doing. What am I talking about? I don't know what I'm doing. We need to activate a filament, which is kind of like a little light bulb in the back end of the x-ray tube. The filament boils off electrons, which then get launched to this piece of heavy metal, this copper color thing right in the middle. Called the anode. And then that ejects x-rays through this aperture at the bottom of the container. He knows the basics. So you heat up the cathode. The cathode produces electrons from the extreme heat. The electrons bounce into that slanted piece of metal, which can be made of anything from tungsten into molybdenum or other metals. The electrons bounce off the anode, then go down the direction of the actual opening of the x-ray tube, and that's where the x-ray stream goes. So he knows what he's talking about. According to the x-ray tube data sheet, the filament ground should be right here. I guess we'll just plug it in and see what happens. Can you just get this uh, x-ray building blueprint online or something? I, this is like all new to me. Slowly <laughs> increase the current. Oh, you see it glowing? Oh, that's so cool. You're trying to heat up that current to crazy amounts of heat so that it actually boils off electrons from that filament. Those electrons are what bounce off into the anode and produce the x-rays once they hit the metal anode. We're about 30 seconds away from making x-rays. All we have to do is turn both power supplies on at the same time. But before we do that, we need to take some safety precautions. Let's go! Finally some safety precautions in here. I, mean, I wonder if he's gonna make the lead vest like the last guys did. I bought a giant roll of lead sheet metal and I'm gonna repurpose parts from the dental x-ray head to protect some of my most valuable assets. The Geiger counter is directly underneath. Personal Geiger counter is going in my belt. I love these homemade genital lead coverings that these guys make. It's very funny to me. We can create an image with the phosphor screen. When we run x-rays through it, they turn into visible light in the phosphor, and that visible light can then be measured by us with either a camera or with a piece of film. I'm really happy that he's actually using an object, unlike the last video we did where they were using their own hand at first. He may do that later, I don't know, but at least we'll start with an object. So if we stick our phosphor screen on the ground below the x-ray generator, and we put four soda cans on top of it and then put this piece of acrylic on top of that and then we put a subject like maybe real human finger bones cast in ballistics gel and when we blast x-rays through it we should see this film glow with the shadow of finger bones cast on it so what should happen is the bones in the finger should block the x-rays and the x-rays should penetrate around the finger because the bones essentially block x-rays and they create the white image on x-rays the rest is a darker shades of gray and black all right i think we got a picture oh look at this 
We totally have an image. That is so cool. The contrast is really bad, but I wonder if we can fix that in Photoshop. That's actually pretty good. Pretty good. I'm pretty impressed for just being in your garage. I already feel the safety nerds two feet up into my butt and I'm gonna lose it. This is dangerous, but it's not that dangerous. Have you ever been in a car? Have you ever gone to the doctor and gotten an extra? Have you gotten a CT scan? Dear God, let's talk about the amount of radiation exposure you get from a CT scan. It's pretty high from a CT scan. Abdomen pelvis CT, I don't know, 10 millisieverts maybe. One CT is roughly three times what you would get in just annual background radiation throughout your daily life. So yeah, CT is a lot of radiation. X-rays are very small compared to a CT scan. A CT scan is made of X-rays actually, but it's rotating X-rays constantly around you versus a single shot X-ray. It's not really that much radiation, but when you're just generating it in your garage without any lead shielding around the housing, that's when it becomes an issue. And I don't know what kind of current he's putting in here or, or what kind of X-rays he's producing. So that's what makes it a little dangerous, but the actual radiation is not as bad as a CT scan. That doesn't mean you should do it. Statistically, if you keep your exposure to a minimum, you are perfectly safe. This is why x-rays are allowed for medical purposes. And the small number of stray x-rays that do end up leaving the setup and hitting me or anybody near here are nothing compared to getting on an airplane, getting a CT scan, getting an x-ray, or just living your life and being exposed to background radiation. He's actually correct here because all he's going to get is scatter radiation, especially if he's standing far enough back with the inverse square law, which I talked about in the previous video. He's actually right, but he's actually exposing himself to more. It is probably less than what you would get with an annual background radiation dose, but this is also more and it compiles over time. So there is risk, but it's not as high as one would think. That being said, I'm still gonna put this iron dome around the whole thing because it's gonna look sick. See, he's actually doing it the right way, which I'm pretty impressed with. The microphone on the camera died, but we were successful in getting an x-ray of a hand. I cannot believe how good it looks. Why does everybody have to x-ray their hand? Why is that the go-to? Can't you just be content with the phone and the fake hand or the fake finger? Why do you have to do your own hand? That's actually a pretty good picture, but uh, probably wouldn't use my real hand. His hand actually looks pretty good. No arthritis, so that's good. Not a real medical diagnosis here. I think everyone should build their own hospital in their garage. The price is right. I don't see why we can't just build our own equipment. We got the internet. How hard is it to find a broken bone in an x-ray? <laughs> I know he's joking, but the reason you can't do this is because the imaging is not up to par compared to medical grade imaging. You can't see anything on his x-ray. Ours is crazy detail, perfect, software is amazing. That's what makes me be able to read x-rays well. All right, so that concludes another episode of radiologists reacting to people making homemade x-rays. This was actually pretty good. Shout out to William Osmond. He did a great job with this. He was safe, as safe as you can be building a garage x-ray machine, but nonetheless, he was pretty safe. So that officially concludes this video. Make sure you smash that subscribe button, follow me on Instagram and TikTok if you don't already, and I'll see you all on the next video because I have a wedding to get to. Bye.